Hello, good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? Oh, I'm all right. I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling, I'm just feeling a little somber, to be honest, because I've just, you know, we don't need to, we don't need to bring everybody down forever, but I've just been reflecting on like a year ago, today type of stuff, all week long. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, honestly, I'm feeling a little somber. How are you today? Um, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I, I'm good. loving the sunshine and the warmer weather we've been having. Yeah. I think I'm very much a seasonally affective <laughs> disorder, seasonal affective disorder, yeah. um, because sunny, pretty days, my mood is much better. So. Yeah. yeah, well, and this week, I mean, this week has been, has been really, really nice. It's just been Hi, a sunny Good morning, Andrea. Uh, like, like starting over the weekend, it was still cold, but like just it had been this sudden rush of just like clear skies. And I'll yeah. tell you, that might be another reason why I'm feeling kind of like off or salty or something. Um, I I did something to my foot. It's fine, but I have like pain on the bottom of my foot. I think it's probably plantar fasciitis. More information than anybody needs. It will go away. But so this week, I have not been able to like take long walks or go for a run or do any of the things that I would normally do to like celebrate. Oh, look, I can go outside without my coat on. I can, yeah. you know, look around and see what's blooming. And because my foot has been hurting and it's like, it really does hurt like limping type of thing. So um, I can't, I shouldn't really push that. It won't get better <laughs> if I keep pushing it. So um, that kind of bummed me out about this week too. I'm like, mm, yeah, it is nice outside. It would be nice to go for a walk right now. <laughs> It really would. Hi, Melanie. How are you? Good morning, Melanie. I I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I couldn't get my dog to come in from outside yesterday. Like he was oh. having a grand old time sniffing everything. That's, that's understandable. I think that's probably how a lot of us were like at lunchtime, like on our lunch, lunch breaks. You know, I picture this is not how it is. Please no one think this, but I picture like our library director, like poking her head out the door being like, are you going to come in now, Leah? It's time to come inside. You know, <laughs> it just, uh, you walk out to your car and then you're like slowly walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like this time last year, things were just so <laughs> different. It was, I don't, it, there was this whole air of what in the world is happening. Like I just, yeah. it was panic. It was, yeah. it was, it was something else. Yeah. You and I were talking about that a little bit before we got on here and I know I called it, a vibe just there was <laughs> there was a vibe i had never experienced before um and yeah it certainly you know and it the scales tipped once everything really began to close and shut down but i had been at the grocery store a little bit before that it was on the 11th which is what you and i were talking about a day where a lot of things happened including them calling it a pandemic and also for me the tipping point when tom hanks tom hanks announced he was sick um and I was at the grocery store that night and it wasn't the the panic of the grocery store that was gonna happen a few days later. It was like the eerie silence of the grocery store. There were a lot of us there. We all had carts that were mounted, but there was only be like one person. It wasn't families, it wasn't groups of people and no one was rushing. We were all just like quietly with our giant carts, not speaking, looking around. And that's that's one of those things that I remember from this time last year was just like, just no one really knowing. We hadn't gone full into the insane panic. That yeah. Followed. Earlier in the week, I had gone to Sam's Club to stock up on like some. Well, that was a convenient. Wine. I'm glad you did because and I still have a giant thing of oatmeal that we haven't even opened yet. Um, you had the best of intention. You were gonna just get heart healthy and eat so much oatmeal. Well, it's one of those things that's very filling. You know, it is. It, it is. does require like water. I eat it. I don't know. I don't. Well, it does require water. It requires water, but other than that, I don't <laughs> think you need anything else. No, so, no. Like, oh, I know. Yeah. So it's like one of those, like it'll be easy to to do this right. if like, right. I can't get back to the grocery store oh. to get milk, or yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like stocking up on that kind of stuff, and like there was no toilet paper to be found, no paper towels, no paper products of any sort, and there were like all these people, like, what do we get? Like it was mm -hmm. like. I'm like I need coffee creamer, and if I can't stock up on a month's worth of half and half, maybe <laughs> so like powdered coffee creamer, and it just I know I used the last of recently. <laughs> oh my gosh! Congratulations! Yeah, and since I my my original stockpile, I did mostly eat my way 
through that because I was like canned stuff and things, things I eat anyway. Um, and then I bought some zany things that I would have never normally eaten. But then I was like, you bought this, you're going to eat it. So uh, there was the night. I mean, this is especially zany or anything. It's just not what I would nor normally would eat. You know, there's, I had, you know, I ate my canned chili. I ate my uh, SpaghettiOs, you know, like the things that I was like, just who knows how long we'll be. Yeah. Uh, but I did eat through most of that. But then I tried to keep like a two week ish. I tried to try to keep a stash of stuff. I still have it in case I can't go to the grocery store. At this point in time, we're all more familiar. My parents could go and pick up my click list order. You could pick up my click list order. You know, we can yeah. we know now better what yeah. our options are. But um, I kept that that little stash of things. So I'm trying to like rotate through that, that all, like some of that expired in February, like yeah. the mac and cheese and stuff. So like I recently ate like my boxed mac and cheese from my COVID stash. <laughs> I, uh, um, I, we had done like the, the logical, you know, grocery shopping earlier in the week. And then that Friday after it's like the library is closing and we're like, mm -hmm. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I I went to um, the grocery store after work that night because you just felt like you had to. Like yeah. you're like you're, you're like it's like a magnet. I think everyone in Lancaster was like magnetized to the grocery store. Like, and I think like, you know, I gotta get one more thing of milk and yeah. So, but I also picked up chips and dip and cookies and a cake. And brownies and <laughs> ice cream. Like I was just like oh, the true God. essentials. Yes, I'm like my apocalypse is going to be better than your apocalypse. <laughs> right. I had so many canned beans, Leah. I even made this one dish that I looked online. Pizza beans is what it was called that I had found like some recipe for, and I was like pizza beans. This sounds, you know, it'll be pizza y but with beans. And I just remember eating it and sending a video to some friends and being like, I'm eating a bowl of butter beans right now that has like cheese on top. And you can call it whatever you want, but it's a bowl of butter beans with cheese. This is not very good. <laughs> but you were over there eating a sheet cake. It wasn't that big. It was small, <laughs> but it was just in my mind, it is that big. In no, my mind, you must be great. Little, it was a little, like, little, little one. Um, and Andrea's like, She's got to uh, go through her COVID stash. She's probably got some stuff expiring too. Yeah. And comfort food. Yes. That's exactly where I was going with that. Um, yes. Mary waited until the next Tuesday. I was worried everything was going to be gone. And it probably was. <laughs> and Andrea's like, oh, the pizza beans. Yeah, yeah, she was, Andrea received the pizza beans. Heard about <laughs> Oh yeah. And the other thing about like when Mary went on Tuesday or like when we went that following week, when things were pretty much in a panic, I had a, that, that was a bad week to go to the grocery store. Um, the thing about that is everything else was closed. So I also think it was the only place anyone could go. Like yeah. if you, if you were feeling like I, I got to get out, like at that point you could really only go to the grocery store. So I think it was like, that was how you, not only did it make you feel prepared, but it was like, well, I, this is it. This is all I have is going to the grocery store. So, um, yeah. yeah, I didn't go to the grocery store for weeks then. It, um, and I did a couple click lists and I, I even one time did a, I think the first like restock I did was a delivery order. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had the, the one panicked trip and then, and then I did click list and, you just never knew if that what what if anything they were gonna have, but like right. you could at least get like you know something. Um, and it, then I would paper. not toilet paper. No, that was not available. No, no. I actually have on my phone a screenshot from sometime in April where the situation was beginning to. I we I needed to find some toilet paper, and I was looking on Amazon, um, and. I had texted the picture to my parents and I, it was one of those giant rolls from like, like a public restroom, like the yeah. mall or something. And it was very expensive, but it was, it was like this big. And I was like, are we there yet? Should I try to order this from Amazon? Um, and, I, and I didn't, but I would, went, would they do these rounds through Giant Eagle? Cause it was like the quietest of the store, grocery stores. And I would go in there and I would just like pop my head back to the toilet paper aisle and I'd be like, 
nothing, nothing. And then one day there were like six packs of quilted Northern. There's still nothing else, but like six packs of that. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> right? Like, I, I always look at these stupid articles on the internet. And after Christmas, I had seen this one where this guy, he'd gotten like six of those giant rolls from his sister. He complained about, you know, he lived like in, I think it was New York City. And he complained about, you know, mm -hmm. having to carry the giant packages of toilet paper. Home yeah, to sure. And as a joke, a Christmas joke, she got him those giant rolls of toilet paper. And he's like, not so funny now. Oh <laughs> like, my gosh. That's great. And now you guys, now we go to the store and that paper product aisle is overflowing. It's not the same as it used to be. It's like different versions of the same toilet paper, but now that's everywhere. Like there's just that giant eagle aisle. I actually took a picture the other day because like to compare, because it was just like, there was like a pyramid of toilet paper. And I don't know, sorry guys, if we're talking about this too much, but if you have anything in the comments, any memories or whatever, please join in. I remember when I went to the grocery store, I'm going to jump in again. When I went Please to the do. grocery store, it was what, Friday the 13th. Right? I know, we got we got to factor that in. Friday the 13th and that time change weekend. And it was so March 13th, but like everything is kind of like stopped and shut down and like, you know, people aren't doing anything now. And I'm walking around the grocery store and there are these pyramids of cases of beer like throughout the store because you know it's almost St. Patrick's Day and what do you do on St. Patrick's Day? Right. And I'm just like yeah I bet they regret buying all that. <laughs> yes. Well and actually I wait we'll get back to that in a second but like that reminds me of the my like basically the first thing that I did like my first outing after COVID was like well into the summer and my mom and I just I feel like it was the summertime anyway. My mom and I just went shopping some places. We went to Kohl's, you know, we had our masks, we did. And it was very low key, but I had not, I had not casually been in a store since before COVID. And um, I'll never forget that shopping trip either because everything was so marked down because they didn't sell anything for so long. And I was like, sweater, 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 you know, like it was just, there was so much stuff. And so I, that the, you talking about the beer reminded me, you know, people were prepped for like a certain normal amount of retail mm -hmm. and then it did not happen. I remember that. I, I picked up a few things. Also, um, lots of stores are just like slashing prices. Like I bought yeah. boats and it was just like, because yeah, the racks were so full. It was just, no yeah. one had been out. Yeah. Well, are you going to St. Patrick's Day? Do you have, because now this year it's, different still not normal but different you know than it was last year at least well my st patrick's day is a at home Patrick's day funny that we'll admit that um but typically we will we will have a brisket oh yeah no. brisket um and cabbage brisket and cabbage um and uh potatoes that's that's usually yeah. like the dinner yeah um, but um i tend to dress up for saint patrick's day like i well, this does not surprise me at all for most people saint patrick's day isn't a dress up holiday but i always have to dress up most often i do wear a green wig um i, I have like a variety of green wigs that i have purchased over the years some of them are long some of them are short so yeah, I, I, and I have a cauldron that I carry when there's little, um, you know, like a witch's cauldron. Uh -huh. it, it's, 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 um, small and I buy wrapped candies that are in gold wrappers and I have like my pot of gold and, and I share with people. <laughs> I have apparently never encountered you. you. never been no. to library. St. Patrick's I've never Day. Never been on St. Patrick's Day because that is really, I did not know any of this, actually. I am learning along with everybody else. And I, but of course, any holiday where you can justify dressing up, you're going to dress up. That is um, the Leah that I know. Yes. Melanie says, I have a stunning bright green wig. <laughs> I can't. So are you going to dress up this year then? I think I have to. We need a little yeah. bit of levity in, our, in, in life. It's yeah, just, I think you should too. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last year, last 
year before. I don't know. Year before yeah. I, I worked, but and I had I have I didn't I don't think I wore the wig that year, but I did wear um stuff. I've I've got all manner of St. Patrick's Day paraphernalia. Oh, I did yeah. not know any of this. So that is very exciting for me to learn. And I'll have to you'll have to um well as St. Patrick's Day is gonna be the middle of the week. So we're not gonna be on our show or anything, but maybe you can no. uh, take a picture and very, very poorly show it to us like this on the screen. Um, oh, an ankled bob. Melanie says that your wig was an ankled bob. That sounds great. Yes, I have I have one that's an ankled bob, one that's long and layered. And well, St. Patrick's Day, in my mind, it marks to uh, I, I just associate it with this. It is true, but also like for other reasons. Um, I associate it with when I can start planting my potatoes. Um, in my yard, I put the, I do like just like the potatoes in the buckets because it's very easy. Um, and I think that probably you could start, probably maybe you should start planting them a little bit later. But in my mind, because it's like Irish and stuff, I think like, okay, like once St. Patrick's Day has passed, I can begin to plant my potatoes. Um, and I know I did some of that last year because last year, again, I was like, I think I wrote somewhere, I have like a little garden not like a diary, but just like notes that I keep about the garden from year to mm -hmm. year. So I know what I did and what I should do differently. And I think I wrote in there, I know it is too early, but out of desperation slash hope, <laughs> I went ahead and planted because just, I mean, I was like, oh, you know, well, I know flowers will grow. I know my radishes will grow. Like maybe yeah. I can just plant them now and they'll still grow. And they mostly did because it wasn't <laughs> that cold last year. So, yeah. um, so I'm going to start doing some of that soon too. I think I actually brought it to show and tell. Um, these are my peas that I like I grew last year and then like I saved the peas and then dry it, you know, so I can plant them again. So I'm what's the word? I'm being like sustainable. I'm self-sufficient here. My um, my pea crop is I don't need a store or a seed catalog. I can grow a handful of peas all on my own now. Um, I don't know if you know yet library news um we're going to be starting a um seed library at the baltimore branch oh cool and oh, they're doing this time down with seeds her favorite subject so this at the end of this growing season if you want to awesome. gather some of your seeds up and donate them to the seed library and then next year you can get out some you can get different seeds. yes it's going to be yes I will definitely do that. I love that. That is so exciting. Judith, it works. You know, she's the manager of our Baltimore yeah. branch and she's the one who said seeds are her favorite subject. And um, Judith, that's very exciting. I will have to talk to you about that. And I will definitely, I'm not going to plant all these peas probably. It's, I don't have enough room for that many peas. So next year, when the same thing happens again, I will donate my peas and they're, they've always been very good. So. Yeah, so it, it's it's exciting. It's just something new that we're doing this year. We're going to get that started and mm -hmm. up and running. And um, yeah, call the Baltimore branch and ask for Judith if you want more information. Yes, that is really, really cool. Thank you for starting that, everybody. <laughs> um, other library news. I guess we should mention what happened oh, this yeah. week. <laughs> I can see the look on your face. You're like, I have no idea what she's going to talk about. I know, about. like, what's she going to drop on me? <laughs> I'm not prepared. <laughs> With the library opened up again for in-person service. Um, we are requiring masks and, you know, social distancing. And we are asking people to limit their time in the library to um, one hour a day. Just for, so, because we can't have very many people in at a time. It gives you a chance to come in and do your thing and get out. So we can continue to have people come in throughout the day um, because we do have occupancy limits um, and all of that just for social distancing purposes, but we are open again for, to the public and um, yeah. So oh, I know it's so exciting. When I told my mom, she was like, Oh, I can't wait to go shopping <laughs> because just going to the, I just it's like the best kind of shopping a it's books and b it's free so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah yeah just to be able to browse we've done we've done everything we can to try to make make it better that you can't come in to try to offer some semblance of browsing experience whether it's talking about books online or doing the book bundles or pulling you know everything we could possibly do but nothing really replaces being able to come in and just browse yeah. the shelves of new books i mean 
Well, and it's been nice seeing, you know, familiar faces again, people you haven't mm -hmm. seen in a year in some cases. Um, I mean, we've been open here and there throughout. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we opened up for a little bit in the summer mm -hmm. uh, and then again in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, some of those people, they were being safe and staying home, so we didn't see them then. So mm -hmm. we're starting to see some of those faces again that we haven't Well, that's got to be so nice. I mean, that's not so much part of my job because of the work right. that I do, but like that has to be really nice to see people you haven't seen in so long. And that's got to probably make things feel a little bit more normal too, you know, to see, you know, this person to greet them, say hello, see them sit at the computer they normally go and sit at. And yep. I don't know, that's got to feel good. Yeah, it's nice. And, you know, having, having people around again, like the first morning I walked in, um, I was working, I was off Monday and Tuesday and then um, I came in Wednesday, but I worked the late shift. So when I came in, the mm -hmm. library was already open to the public. So you know, coming in and seeing people already in the building was kind of like, that's right. Mm -hmm. we did this. Right. <laughs> right. We're not, we're not like, we're looking how we should, you know, there should be yeah. people in there. Yes. Yeah. And that, so that's really great having people back. Um, that's really good. I'm so glad to hear that that's how that's feeling. And um, at my branch, I have, I mean, it is nice where we have a lot of children. We have, a, we have a lot of different different patrons, but we do have a lot of children who visit our branch. And so it has been nice to, we have like these cement floors. So it's nice. I hear, I hear them running, you know, I hear like the, the little kid running sound um, and things like that, which again, haven't heard in a year, like you're saying. So it has added just like the proper ambiance. I think that's how it's to be. Yeah, and I got a I got a text from one of my other co-workers. I love the sound of children in the library. Oh it's my gosh. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's how it should be. So that's really encouraging. I hope that this is the final time that we're going through this part. <laughs> yeah. And you know, things just they're looking very hopeful right now. And mm -hmm. I, I hope that things continue mm -hmm. on this upward path and it just everything goes well and Me things too. Go back to a new normal i guess right right things are never gonna change some things are never gonna go away like right you know, curbside service is here to stay that's mm -hmm. something patrons love so mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna keep doing that mm -hmm. and you know who knows how long we'll be on the air allison we may be here for another 20 years no I'm <laughs> <laughs> i've only got 17 until i can retire no <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, that's fine then. <laughs> um, I thought it sounded crazy until you said it would only be 17. Um, yes, Melanie says the kids are thrilled to be in the library and the poor joy on their, pure joy on their faces is wonderful. So yeah, it's, yeah. And I think especially kids, you know, the joy, seeing kids love books and love reading is just, it's the best thing about being a librarian. Yeah, it really is. No matter what your job mm -hmm. in the library is, I think that's something that we all feel and we all connect to that because we all were also kids once. And many people who work in libraries had a good experience as children in libraries, except Leah. <laughs> Based on the face she's making, I know nothing. I, 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 I've told you before how I struggled with reading. Right. And um, there was... We had this one librarian. Um, she, she, I ended up working in the library where I went as a kid. Um, That's why I said that because I, I knew you worked there, so I assumed you had had a good experience there. But I, I mostly did. There was one librarian. Luckily, she retired before I got there. Who was sometimes not very nice and scolded me. Um, I was maybe not the most quiet child, but. And I didn't think it was right that I couldn't go upstairs. Like, what was that about? But the nonfiction area was for adults only. But all of that changed by the time I got there. Yeah. Yeah. I can. And anyone should be allowed to browse the nonfiction, but perhaps also, as you said, maybe, maybe you were disrupting the adults who were browsing the nonfiction. Maybe. Maybe it's a little column A, a little column B. Lines. It's like, we're paying them. What do you care? So, yeah. This is well, what really like me. Many children who <laughs> grew into librarians 
maybe maybe those experiences, be they good or bad, shaped our choice to become librarians. Maybe we'll put it that way. And so therefore, when we see children enjoying themselves in libraries, it warms our little hearts. Yes, but the librarians I worked with there later, yeah, very great, love them. Yeah, but, um, yeah. One well, and I think anytime there's like rules in place that you feel like shouldn't apply to you, you know, right. across the board, like we all are going to feel a little bit like, well, but, but why I should be able to do that. Yes. And just the fact that like, I had so much trouble reading for yeah. a lot of years kind of made it, I didn't want to go to the library, but by the yeah. time I was fourth grade I loved reading like I was I loved it and I read nonstop, and I would walk from my house to the library so it grew to be a place that mm -hmm. I love just <laughs> yeah well that was part of the year that was part of the allure for me too because growing up I could walk to the library in the summertime so it was like a place that I could go that I had like independence and control of going there. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost any money. So, you know, I didn't need to like ask for money to go, but you know, you could just go and then you could spend as long as you wanted there. Not currently right now, because we have those time limits because of COVID, right. but hopefully one day again in the future, um, you can spend as much time as you want there. It's air conditioned in the summertime. And just, <laughs> I don't know, it just, it just felt like a sense of like freedom. And yeah. then you get to read all these books. So there's freedom in the books that you're picking up and reading too. You're like opening the world. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember particularly one summer, uh, most of the time, you know, we all, we went to the library as a family, like my mom and my mm -hmm. sister, and I, we would go to the library. But this one summer, I remember walking to the library a couple of times. I don't know why, mm -hmm. um, but it was like, just, I love that sense of freedom that I had mm -hmm. and that independence and picking out my own books mm -hmm. and just... Yeah. I loved it all until I had to carry it home. Yeah. Because, because I walked there and I would bring like a book bag. And so that's fine. I had the book bag to carry it on, but it's summertime and I'm walking home and just, we all know that sweaty book bag feeling, the book bag against your back. And it yeah. was just like, you get home and you're like, you know, forget it. I don't want to read these books. I don't want to see them ever again. I'm too hot. But, you know, Melanie says she was so proud when she got her first library card. Oh, that's a great feeling. When I got my first library card, like, in order to get your library card, um, you had to be able to write your name. Like that mm -hmm. was the requirement to get your library card. Like you had to be old enough to be able to write your own name. So like mm -hmm. I got my first library card and then they just kept that card on file. And, um, <clears throat> and I, it, when I started working there as an adult, like, you know, I'm was what, 24 when I started working there, I, they still had my original card on file no. from where I was like a, a kid and like one of my letters was backwards and like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I wish I had gotten to keep that. Like, I, oh. I wish I had that. but yes. Oh, that is really, really, really sweet. I found my, it wouldn't have been my first library card, but I found a library, the library card from this library from when I was a kid that I had signed for. Maybe it was my first one that was like mine, mine, and my mom had signed on my other ones. I don't know, but I did find it. And now I don't remember, but I know I dotted my eye with something weird. It was like a spiral or I, I used to, I went through a phase in third grade where I used to dot the eye in my name with a cat nose and whiskers. Oh, but I don't think I was bold enough to do that on my library card. That seems like a, that seems like a lot. But I yeah. think I may have done like a spiral or something like that because <laughs> I found it with, with all my stuff and I was like, oh, Allison. <laughs> yes, but they still had my first registration form. That is so cute. So it's really, really cute. <laughs> and Melanie says that her mom said that if they picked out their books, like whatever books they had, they picked out, they also had to be able to carry them when they walked home from the library. And I mean, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, it's just easy to forget when you're in there and you're surrounded by all these books and you want them all. But luckily we usually drove so we could get a bunch. That's good. Yes. <laughs> well, and I do remember that conversation too with my mom, like you, like one, we can always come back. You can get more books later next time. Yeah. And like two, like, are you even going to be able to read these? And three, are you going to lose them? You can't, don't check out so many that you're going to lose them in your disaster of a bedroom. So. Oh, yeah. I've more than one library book over the years. 
Well, like we said last week, you might think that the people who work at the library would be like the best library customers, but we're not often really. And again, no judgment. I was thinking about it. No judgment on people, other people who have had fines and who have lost library books. The whole point of that is that we all do that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you a bad library customer or patron, but I do think that people, uh, people probably think that we don't do that ever. And it's just, that is not true. We have all paid for books. <laughs> I had a book I almost got charged for because it was so overdue. Um, but I got it back to the library just in the nick of time that I did not get charged for it. But do you, do you think I read it in the time that I had it? And the no. extra time that it was here? No, because I kept thinking, oh, I'm gonna take that back tomorrow. Oh, I gotta take that back tomorrow. So I never started it. You had six months and never read it, or however yes. long after renewals, because sometimes yes. the renewals will build up and like you end up having it for such a long time, but this I one know. I didn't get to renew once. So that's why. Well, there you go. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> and I wanted to update people. I did make a comment last week, but I wanted to update people. The hold lockers, as Leah said, don't open after five days because you get five days to pick up your holds in the building. So you also get five days to pick them up at the hold lockers. Um, and so what the way that that's controlled is just they don't open after five days. And that is what <laughs> happened to me with the book that I had in the hold lockers. So the next person is getting it. The next person will, I just put myself back on hold for it again, but I did want to publicly announce that. So please get your things in a timely fashion from the hold lockers. Yes, yes. Or you will be sorry, <laughs> as I am sorry. Just real quick, I want to tell people, I'm reading the book, The Lost Apothecary. I had spoken about it before when we talked about books yeah. that were coming out. And um, it's by Sarah Penner, uh, P-E-N-N-E-R. Mm -hmm. It's very good. I'm good. about a little more than halfway through it, and I'm really liking it. And that's so. there's two different storylines, right? Like a yes. one in the past there's and one. One in the past, one in the present. And they're like connected um i don't want to tell you how or why but yeah, sure. connected mm -hmm. and um but yes it's very good so, I yeah, I'm, so glad that, I'm so glad and i did just get i know we got to go but i did just get it's not here um a copy of clara and the sun the book we talked about last week Ooh, that we're I get that one too my true heart of being a snob online um but so <laughs> because it was when i found out that he had won a national book award or a, a whatever award he won, I was like, oh, well, in that case, I might be interested in reading it. But also because he wrote books by award winners. Right, but he wrote, didn't he write Never Let Me Go? And I really liked that book. So yeah. that that was actually, I didn't realize it was him who wrote that either. And I, and I really liked that. So anyway, I have my copy, speaking of books we've talked about on here before, I have my copy of that at work and who knows, maybe in the next few weeks I'll read it or maybe four weeks from now I'll say I'm returning this. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to get, I just wish every book was available as an audiobook. I <laughs> that's just so much easier for me. I love audiobooks. Yeah. Um, and she says it sounds very good. I don't know if she's talking about Claire in the Sun or I didn't really explain Claire in the Sun, so probably lost apothecary. Yeah, and and I did sound good and um mysterious. Uh, Mary says she <laughs> also always keeps things late and is very glad we have gone fine free. We all are very glad, we all are very glad that we're free and free. So, and yeah. had mentioned that she really liked the Peter Rabbit books when she was tiny because they were just her size. They because those are very small. Yes, those are the ones that I always checked out. I love them. They had this cute little and they had the green covers. Like, yes, like the fabric covers. Like yes, I loved those. So. <laughs> Well, it was really nice to chat on here today and to reflect a bit on where we've been in the last year. Yeah. We have a bunch of new services that we didn't have a year ago. We actually have a ton of new services we didn't have a year ago, some yeah. of which we had planned and just accelerated, and some of which kind of came out of nowhere, like curbside pickups. So um, I really. Actually, Becky and I talked about curbside pickup in February last year. So. I remember because you had, there was a presentation about it and everything, but we, it's, that was not like on our. It wasn't on the plan for. Uh, not like. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't on the plan for 2020. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're already familiar with it as an idea, but we, it was not like the hotspots, which we were, you know, <laughs> trying to do anyway. Doing, and then the money disappeared because of the, yeah. I know. So the it was, came yeah, and, we, were, we were able to push through things that we weren't, 
you know, that we wouldn't have done otherwise probably, but I'm really I'm happy. I'm really glad we were able to do the lockers at Maine. Like, um, we had them at Millersport and we'd already, I think we were in the process of planning on getting them installed at Baltimore. I don't know where that was. Yeah. Um, it's all muddled. Um, but at Maine, we were like, oh, I don't know if we can make it work. I don't know if we'll get permission to, to do them because we're in the historic district. But yeah. yes, so I'm so glad that happened. Yeah. I just think that's a wonderful service. I do too. I mean, as long as you aren't lazy and behind like me, then it is a wonderful service. Um, <laughs> days I'm your email. Um, but I, I do I do feel like we did so much stuff in the last year that we wouldn't have otherwise, including yeah. the show. But it There's is so a lot of good that happened from a lot yeah. of bad. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but like you said, to see people in the in the library again brings us back to like the core essential service. And it's really nice to be back to that a year later, even if it's not exactly the same. Yeah. So welcome back. It's good to welcome see you. Welcome back, everybody. It's nice to see you here. And it's gonna be nice to see you in person as you begin to trickle back in. So Thank you for hanging out with us this morning and every Friday morning. We'll be here again next week. Yep. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.